let me ask you a question. Have you ever heard of Wind Witches? If you have, it's probably for one of two reasons. The first one is you've watched the anime. In Arc 5, one of the four bracelet girls, Rin, used Wind Witches. Briefly. Before just dying and never being in the story again. Rest in peace, Rin. The second reason you might have heard of them is because sometimes they were used as an engine in certain decks. If you're one of those weird decks that doesn't really need any special summoning, or that only special summons Wind Synchro Monsters, you can get away with just throwing Wind Witches in them, and get a bonus Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon, basically for free. As an engine, you run Ice Bell, Glass Bell, and Snow Bell, and then Synchro Summon them into a Winter Bell before making a Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon. But earlier this year, they got a bunch of new support. So what do they do now? Okay, so maybe they haven't changed too much. But how do you make them into a deck then? Well, the answer is just slap in a bunch of staples. Solemns, hand traps, and a bunch of draw power to make them as likely as possible to do the one thing that they do, and to do it well. A crystal wing backed up with a bunch of staple negations is not the worst end board. So welcome to playing the unplayable, this time with Wind Witches. For this first hand, I want to show an example of what full combo looks like. You start with Glass Bell, which will search Snow Bell, and then you summon an Ice Bell from your deck thanks to Wind Witch Chimes. The Snow Bell then summons itself, you make a Winter Bell as a stepping stone, doing a bit more burn, and then you make a Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon. You then just need to set your traps, and end your turn. Ash Blossom takes care of my opponent's extravagance, then the Crystal Wing stops their Link Spider, and then... I think you get the gist of it. So this first match was a success, in the sense that it made a Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon, and backed it up pretty well. But if it had gone up against some more resistance, it would have mattered more and been a better showcase, but hey, a win's a win. On to game two. This time, I want to show a bit of a side engine that the deck has. With this second hand, I want to show off what Magicalized Fusion can do for the deck. Since they're all spellcasters, you get four into the graveyard just from doing your normal combo, and you can have a fifth on the field if you make a Blizzard Bell instead of a Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon. I do my usual combo, getting a bunch of spellcasters in the graveyard, and then I make sure to summon Freeze Bell before making Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon, otherwise it wouldn't be able to special summon itself. I make the Crystal Wing Dragon, and then make Freeze Bell gain a level so that I can also make a Blizzard Bell. Now I have well over enough spellcasters in my graveyard. My opponent starts doing things, and it looks like they're playing Nordics. I don't care enough about Nordics to be threatened, so I just negate their first effect, and then they spawn a bunch of Hippo tokens to try and stall. Luckily, this won't be a repeat of last game. I use Magicalized Fusion to make a Quintet Magician, wiping their board, and then I have well over lethal. So as you can see, their main combo gets four spellcasters in the grave, and a fifth one on the field if you use Blizzard Bell. And they all have different names, so using Quintet Magician is fairly easy in this deck. You can even use Verti Anaconda on later turns just to speed it up a bit. It sort of puts your opponents on a timer, because a full board wipe backed up with 4,500 damage is not the worst. This time, I lost a dice roll. I do have enough to do full combo, but that'll depend on what my opponent plays. We start with an unexpected die, summoning a Queen's Knight, and then follow it up with a Draker's Strait. I'm sitting here thinking, oh, obviously it's going to be Sly for the Sky Dragon. But then I see an Xyz monster come out, and then a second one. And at this point, I already know it's too late. My opponent makes a new topic Draco Future, and I'm just not sure if I'll be able to stop it. I try to use Win as bait to see if they'll negate it, but they don't go for it, so I just need to start playing normally. I use my Ice Bell to start doing the normal combo, getting out Glass Bell and Snow Bell. When it gets to Winter Bell, that's when they activate their Dragon's effect, stealing Winter Bell in the process. Since I have Freeze Bell as an extender, I don't want to give up straight away, so I summon it, and then use Monster Reborn to get out another tuner. This lets me make a Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon anyway. I attack over my monster, doing some damage, set a Solemn, but I know I won't be able to beat Utopic Draco Future since it's immune to destruction from battle and card effects, and I just don't have an out for that. Hey well, you can't win them all. If they could, they wouldn't be on the series. For the next one, let's see a, uh, stranger game. In this fourth game, the combos went fine again. 
I have both a Crystal Ring Synchro Dragon and a Diamond Bell, but nothing to back them up. My opponent summons a Manju, and I negate it straight away, which is maybe a bit premature, since they had a pre-preparation of rights anyway. They then use Relinquished Fusion. It makes a Millennium Eyes Restrict, and since I've never seen anyone make this card properly before, I didn't know you could banish the Fusion card from the graveyard to equip something. In a bit of a panic, I use my Blizzard Bell to try and destroy it, but it ends up just equipping both. They try to attack me, but it's fruitless, since my Diamond Bell used Freeze Bell as a material, making it immune to destruction. This goes on for a few turns until I realise I should just put it in defence mode. After that, I finally get an infinite impermanence, which will let me be able to destroy their monster when I can activate it and reduce their attack to zero. But my opponent has other plans. Instead, they Kaiju my monster, giving me an attack position monster, for them to smash into when I use infinite impermanence. They try to recover by stalling a bit with defense position monsters, but I'm not having it. I end up drawing a magicalized fusion, and have well over enough spellcasters in my graveyard to just nuke the field and then go for game. Overall, Wind Witches did better than expected. What they do do, they do it consistently, and they're a compact enough engine that you can just run a bunch of staples to back them up. Here's a quick look at the deck in case you wanted to play it for yourselves. You run three of Ice Spell, Breeze Spell, and Glass Spell, since they're the most powerful ones, and then three Win to search them. You run two Blizzard Bell and two Snow Bell, just to give you more names basically, and because they can help as useful extenders, or as a way to trigger Diamond Bell. You run three Ash Blossom and three Infinite Impermanence to give you some hand traps, and then three of each Solemn Judgment and Solemn Strike to help you back up your Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon. You also want three Windwitch Shines because it helps you make Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon, or an extra Diamond Bell if you already had something like a nice bell in your hand. It's a useful extender, but only if you have other Windwitches in your hand. You don't want three Desires because it doesn't matter if you banish most of your deck, a Called by the Grave, a Monster Reborn, and a Harpy's Feather Duster just to give you some extra power cards to draw into, and also three Magicalized Fusions so that you can make Quintet Magician when you have five Spellcasters in the Grave. For the rest of your extra deck, you also run Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon, of course, and some Diamond Bells to give you an alternate level 8 if you can't make a Synchro Monster to then tune as a level 1 tuner, and then two Winter Bells as a stepping stone. You don't use your Link Monsters too much, except maybe Verti Anaconda. You can send Magicalized Fusion to the graveyard to make Quintet Magician. You also run Halky Fivax, Selene, and Access Code Talker, since you have some tuners that are also spellcasters that let you Link climb up into it occasionally and Win and Artemis are mostly just filler, but they can come in handy sometimes just to get more spellcasters in the graveyard for your Link plays. Most of the time you'll be locked out of quite a few of these days, so just focus on your Crystal Wing on turn 1. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like, and subscribe! And if you want to see another deck on this series, just comment below! Other than that, happy dueling!